but afterwards, as my Patreon kept growing and my bandwidth kept going up, it was looking like I might have to pay out another 20 bucks or something, which was ridiculous. So I noped the hell out of there. And if I hadn't done that, I would now be on the hook for $1,000 per month. Stand, it's gone. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about image optimization, which if you're not already doing for your site, might be hurting your site a lot. So how does image optimization work? Basically, you have a piece of image, let's say the 4K image, but you don't wanna serve a 4K image to your users. So you pass along some URL params saying, I don't know, like question mark with, let's say most of your users are coming from mobile, then you would have a much smaller resolution. Let's say 320 by height is also 320. Now they will see a much smaller version of that image, something like this. And while this might be, let's say uh, five MB, now this might be just like 10 KB. So yeah, as you can see here, most of the time actually these days, a resource needed for the site is usually on the image side. It's not even the JavaScript that is the biggest resource that a website has to load. So going for image optimization is usually the good SEO tactic as well. So optimized images means you have a faster site, means you have a better SEO and you profit. So what are some of the providers and I can also share some of my experience here uh, because I've gone through a few of them before and I had to switch uh, due to cost reasons. So you will probably find my experience helpful here. So the first one is if you're a web developer, you've probably heard of Vercel. Uh, every, every YouTuber on the grandma has courses for it. I might have one soon, like let's say in a year, uh, assuming I'm not procrastinating either. It is free with a asterisk while you're small. So what that means is Vercel is free if you're not doing any commercial activity. So technically, if you're doing anything that makes money uh, as a website, you are not allowed to be on the free plan. And on top of that, now you're with the cons, you're semi-locked in because of next image. So next image is basically uh, this, where you can give it an image, and then it, uh, let's say you give it a width and a height, or if you don't do it, and then it auto-optimizes it. Now, if you're moving to another service, you're like, okay, how the hell do I do this with an API-based thing? So that can be a, quite a hurdle uh, to come across. So usually people will just stay and then get ripped off, basically. Another thing is, even if you're paying for it, uh, at the beginning, it will seem pretty cheap, like 29 bucks a month, like that's, that's nothing. But what Vercel does, is they bill you like the also the plan for the images themselves don't look that bad five dollars for five thousand images is not that bad but then on top of that they charge you on the bandwidth which is usually where most of the money comes from so you're gonna get pretty fucked on the bandwidth side on the cost side there so i also used the host on Vercel in the beginning for one of my sites uh, the same site I'm going to talk about throughout this uh, video. And it cost me about $20 a month back then, like 29 bucks. I think that it was covered under the uh, basic pro plan. But afterwards, as my Patreon kept growing and my bandwidth kept going up, it was looking like I might have to pay out another, I think, like uh, 20 bucks or something, which was ridiculous uh, just for the bandwidth. So I noped the hell out of there. And if I hadn't done that, I would now be on the hook for $1,000 per month. So yeah, that is not something <laughs> I would be paying for a freaking image optimization service. So yeah, I noped the hell out of there. So what did I switch to from this? I switched to, I tried out a few services. So basically services that are all about image optimization. So. Uh, first, I tried out, I think, Image Kit. So they have a pretty generous, I think it's like 20 bucks a month, uh, 49 bucks a month, but they have a pretty generous free tier where you get 20 gigabytes of bandwidth and then 20 megabyte, uh, gigabytes of media storage, which for a small site is pretty uh, worth it. Uh, this also means that you don't have to pay for additional bandwidth fees, even if you're, like you can keep your website hosted on Vercel, but just use this for your image 
optimization and uh, the bandwidth for the images itself. So the pros for this, and I, I've grouped all of these in the same one because they're pretty, like once you, once you think about it, they're pretty similar in terms of pricing. Uh, this, this is a uh, Cloudflare. So some of the features here uh, that you won't get oversell are like, there's, there's a bunch of them, but the one I specifically like is like this blurring image loading thing, where instead of loading the image, while it's actually loading in the background, it will show you a smaller version of that image, which is blurred. But basically, it's, it's the, instead of loading the image itself, you load a thumbnail sized version of that image, which is kind of blurry, so it kind of looks like the image. So it's like a smooth transition to when the image is actually loaded. I can show it in a video later if, if anybody is interested. So the next point is gonna be, it's free for quite a lot of traffic. So as you can see here, uh, image kit, like most of these are actually either VC funded or they have a pretty generous marketing uh, budget. So they will be free for quite a lot of uh, image requests. I think I got by on this uh, after I quit myself for like about three or four months before my traffic just kept going up. So yeah, this is a pretty good one. And yeah, on the con side, you will get fucked on bandwidth, uh, which is kind of un unavoidable. Uh, so I could probably show a screenshot here. So this is one of the invoices I got for image kit. So you can see here, I, I was I was happy kind of paying for the 49 bucks a month because I was using it. But then I kind of got fucked on the bandwidth here, which is nine bucks per 20, I think that's gigabytes. Uh, and I was paying for 84 of that. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but basically on the bandwidth side, I got like basically another extra base plan charge. So then I was like, okay, if my traffic keeps going up, this is going to go up like exponentially. So let's not, let's not keep doing this. I later also switched to Twix, Twixpix, so this one. Uh, but I found that that is also kind of the same deal in terms of pricing. It, they kind of make it uh, look a bit different. So if you go on here and on pricing, you'll see this like, oh, it's, it's 19 a month. That's actually kind of better than the image grid thing. But if you actually look at the bandwidth pricing, it comes out to about the same. So I, I tried it out for like one or two months and then I was like, okay, this is costing the exact same thing as the image kit. So I just quit. So what did I go to after this one? And that will be Bunny. So Bunny is this service right here and their pricing is pretty generous. So here you could see, here you're gonna get, um, where is the bandwidth pricing? So yeah, it's like $9 per 20 gigabytes overage. And it's like nowhere in close, like <laughs> 20 would be here, it would be just 20 cents. Yeah, one, one gigabyte is uh, one cent, so 20 would be 20 cents. So yeah, <laughs> much, much cheaper. And some of the other things also about them that I really like, they're also the fastest CDN in the world, which is something I found out uh, when I was switching. Uh, so if you go on cdnperf.com, you can see that they're actually 25 uh, milliseconds. They're actually even faster than CloudFront. Uh, and honestly, if you're not that worried about pricing, I would probably go with Bunny uh, for image like transformations and optimization. Like here, it would be, this would cost me 1000. This would cost me, at my current traffic level, this would cost me 1000. This would cost me about 500, 400, 500, something around there. And this one, I quit uh, recently uh, when it was costing me about 100. But then I dropped uh, it with some uh, quality magic. Like I basically reduced the quality on all of my images to like uh, even more and then reduced the size of the images even more. It's barely noticeable, but it was saving me a lot. It, was, it basically halved uh, my usage for bandwidth. So that one I got down to 50 bucks. But even that I felt like it's not, I, I, I didn't feel it was worth uh, the price I was paying and if, if if it kept going up, like if my traffic kept going up, my cost would continue to rise again, back to 100 and then 200 and so on. So I really didn't like that. Uh, so for this, I have some stats I would like to share, just in case people are asking like, oh, <laughs> how the fuck are you, like how would you be spending like 1K on Vercel or like 500 on this guy? Like, Just look at this, 
191 million requests served for images, three terabytes of bandwidth views. Just, just think about that, like here, how much it would cost, how much it would cost here. Like, it's actually nuts. So yeah, uh, some cons for Bunny, even though I really like them. Uh, I'm actually still using them for one of my sites. Uh, so yeah, but I still reduced down my cost from like 50 bucks to about 20 bucks. So I'm still happy about it. Um, and I could like completely take it off if I want to. I don't really want to right now. Um, but yeah, some of the missing features are compared to here, like I was talking about here in the more features department. There are some like niche features, but like it's not, not, not really a big deal. Um, and also, based on the title of the video, you probably know this is still not the cheapest option. So the cheapest option for you would be something called imaginary. So that is this thing. So about a week ago, I found this thing called image proxy, which seemed like it's like a self-hosted, you can host it on your own and it will, you can, like before I had, I was in kind of the mindset that, oh, if I want to serve my own like image uh, optimization thing, I would have to do AWS Lambda and then like connect it to S3 and then put some CloudFront in front of it. It's just gonna be like a whole like hassle. Uh, but I found about this uh, from some Reddit thread and I was looking into it and it seemed pretty good, but I was reading more into it and in the docs, I found that there's basically like, there's some, there's some pro features that you won't get. And I was like, okay, this is kind of uh, not really what I've been up to. Like the, these things like best format, I don't think that should be a pro feature at all. Um, so yeah, I, I was looking for alternatives to this and I found uh, imaginary. So basically it's a, something written in Go, it's like a microservice written in Go just for image processing. And they even have like image proxy, I think has some uh, benchmarks for how many requests it can do per second. Um, maybe I can find it up oh, here. So there's a benchmark port here. Uh, and they, of course they say that they're the best one. Uh, so that's them, image proxy. Uh, or IMG proxy, because there's another one called image proxy, which is much slower, I guess. So image proxy could handle nine requests per second. And yeah, they're, it looks like their file size is much smaller and all that uh, compared to imaginary, but with imaginary, uh, you're like, you're fully in control, basically. Uh, you're you're self-hosting, none of the features are behind some paywall. Uh, they're not like VC funded, it's all completely open source, so you can be sure that um, any, no, <laughs> they're not just gonna completely go dead because their company went dead or something. And also it's not that like that far behind compared to image proxies, like just uh, in terms of the memory usage, I think they're like two to three times uh, more, but yeah, it's like nah, not, not even noticeable. Like um, I'm running on this on a machine with like eight gigs of memory. So. This is gonna be fine for like quite a long time. So how this works, how this setup works is I have the actual um, optimization or resizing service, whatever you wanna call it, on my own machine, but then I have it connected to Cloudflare and I have it so that uh, Cloudflare then caches all the files that I've already uh, resized and I requested. So I don't have to keep on like making requests for the same image for generating the same uh, same dimensions or like for going from 320 height, uh, pixels height or something like that. And Cloudflare is basically free for bandwidth, so that's not a problem either. And for imaginary, uh, this, this whole setup right now is costing me, it's not even costing me anything to be honest because I'm running this on a server I was already paying for, uh, but it's like just in terms of like transparency, it's cost me like nine bucks a month. Uh, basically, I have a machine on Hessler that, that runs just uh, imaginary and one other like website. And yeah, it's the cheapest option at huge scale. So basically this, this server setup can handle, I would say like uh, about two to three times more traffic. And when you're talking about these kind of stats, that, that's actually kind of crazy. Um, and yeah, even if it like, if the server can't handle it, I can just upgrade the server and it's not gonna be that much more expensive, I could upgrade the server to like two times and it will handle like 10 times or 20 times the traffic. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. And also on the bandwidth side, uh, because I'm hosted on Hesner, I don't pay for bandwidth. 
Uh, I think it goes up to like 20 terabytes, so I'm not really worried there either. Uh, yeah, some of the cons though, uh, the pro was that you're in control, but the con is also that you're in control because um, that means you have to now deal with maintenance. So if it goes offline or if there's some like, I don't know, like you have to upgrade the server, or security patch, whatever, you have to do it. And yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of hassle, but yeah. Uh, also in terms of setup, uh, this, this whole thing took me about one or two hours. I think I did it like last week sometime. Uh, all of the other options, I think these two are kind of interchangeable. I basically have one function that passes that URL query param. Uh, and that, that's basically it. Like, I just connect it to some S3 bucket and that's basically it. Uh, in terms of first sell, I mean, that's like, that's the price you pay, but you're, it's kind of easy there. So hope you found this helpful. And if you want me to, I'm, I'm, I've been kind of interested in making a tutorial for this setup, uh, which would be kind of interesting because I recently did it. So I kind of still fresh in my memory and it would not feel that boring because usually when I try to make videos, I just find them pretty boring. Um, so yeah, if you want me to make a tutorial of this, let me know in the comments below and I don't know, like and subscribe and all that stuff. And yeah, uh, also, yeah, one last thing, just <laughs> use my referral link for the Hesner thing so I get some money out <laughs> of all these videos. <laughs> yeah, see so ya, yeah, bye.